Hello, Mad Cappers. The weather is changing here in Canada. So are the leaves and so is our headwear. So today it's about the fabulous fall beret. I'm going to show you how to make it and I'm going to talk to you about how to press it into shape and all sorts of other things that comes along the way when I'm showing you how to make one of my patterns from my 36 year career in the millinery world. So let's get started. Let's go inside and make fabulous fall berets. Now, before we get started, let me introduce you to a dinner plate and a bowl. I did a short yesterday about how to make a beret using the plate and the bowl as a templates for the pattern. And the beret turned out really lovely. It's a short video. It's only a minute long, but it'll give you a really good idea about how this is a good way to start. So the plate and the bowl are tools that I think all of you would have right in your kitchen cupboard. And my plate is 10 and a half inches across the diameter and the bowl is six and a half inches across the diameter. Um, I'll write those numbers down in text in this video for the centimeters as well. Um, but I mean, you could use a larger plate if you want a floppier beret. Don't use a bowl that has an opening that's larger than the circumference of your head because this it will stretch a bit out of shape while you're sewing on the band. Um, but I will put a link to that short video at the end of this video and in the description below. So the next thing that I did was I was trying to, I'm always trying to figure out how you guys that maybe don't make hats full time like I do can sort of adapt to get good results without necessarily having all the tools that I have. And one of the tools that I have is a beret wooden block. So this is really nice because when I make a beret, I can finish it off with a nice pressing by blocking it. Now, normally I would block it before I have the band sewn on, but this also gives me a chance to make sure that I have this, the shape right. And I do. So then I would use a piece of cloth over top like this because this hat is fleece, so it's polyester. So I don't want to destroy the fibers and then just give it a quick steam, which helps to give it some shape that the block provides. Now, as I was doing this last night, I thought to myself, I wonder if you can make something similar from the plate. And yes, you can uh, just find some layers of something that's foam like in your stash. And I've just used broadcloth and I made myself a little pressing pad that fits into my plate. And you're just going to strain it up there and with your steam iron. You can just, again, cover the fleece. If you're using fleece, I recommend using fleece, especially for your first one, because it's so easy. Fleece doesn't fray. It's very forgiving. And you would just iron it just to make sure that all the seams are nice and flat. And the, the heat actually helps to shrink a little bit, the fibers. So you'll have that beautiful shape on the top. All right, let's get down to the business now of making a beret. So our boho beret is a, a beret that's made from eight pieces, eight panels at the top, and I cut them out right sides together in sets of two. So I have four sets of two, and I'm going to sew the twos together on one side with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I have two pieces uh, that will make up my band that goes around the head. And those pieces are one that's, that's the main piece and it's um, about 42 and a half centimeters long. The measurements are there for you. And the other piece is about 18.5 centimeters long and it has a piece of one inch wide elastic. 
or 2.5 centimeter wide elastic. If you want to pause the video, you can transcribe those band measurements. I also am adding a bow. So I'll have a little piece of off cut for my bow center, my casing. And the top piece you can download for free from our website and the link will be in the description below. So I'm just pinning the top pieces together and that will help me make a nice seam on that one side and I will also use my magnetic seam measure. And I'll start with a back stitch and I'll end with a back stitch. And now that I've done that, I'm going to finish that seam with a nice flat top stitch, which will give my beret a little bit of extra support. And it's also a very nice way to make the seam flat and have a decorative finish on the outside. Now, the berets that I sell on my website, I add a piece of one inch, or sorry, one half inch wide twill tape which is about 125 millimeter wide twill tape when I am doing this step. And I'm gonna show you what I do in a minute. So I am actually doing my top stitching on the right side and just feeling with my fingers that the seam is flat underneath. But when I do the same thing, but use twill tape, I do it the opposite. And I work from the inside of the hat and center this, the tape in that seam, and then just sew on either side of the, close to the edge of the tape. And this is a nice way to finish the hat if you aren't going to line it, but it also uh, is something that adds a little bit more rigidity to the beret. So the beret will be slightly less floppy Although this is really not a floppy beret. It's just generous enough so you can pull it down over your ears if the weather is very cold. But for the sake of this lesson, I'm going to do the beret without the twill tape. But if you want to use twill tape, this is how you do it. And the piece without the twill tape will be a little bit softer, a little bit floppier than the one that has the tape. And that's how I would do it if I'm selling it on my website, all taped. So I'm gonna quickly do this top stitching. And once we have the top stitching on these four panel pieces, we're gonna sew two of the pieces together so that our four pieces become two. And again, I'll just sort of start at the bottom. And if I feel like I need to, I will give it a pin. And I will be using a 3 eighths of an inch seam again. And I start at the bottom with the back stitch, go up to the point with the back stitch. And then guess what we're gonna do next? We're gonna top stitch that seam flat. And I just pivot at the top and come back down the other side. So my top stitching is on either side of the seam. And you can lift up the piece too as you go along, just to make sure that it's, it's open wide underneath, that it's flat. Now I'm sewing both sides together. So I now have two pieces becoming one. And guess what? Top stitching. But after all of that, we now have a completed top. So we decide which is the front and the back and sort of make a knot, a notch. And I, in my elastic uh, casing part of my band, I cut 
in the center because I want to know where to put my elastic insert. I want to put my elastic insert close to where the bottom fold is going to be, but on a definite on one side. And I want it to be on the same side on both sides of where I'm sewing it onto the band. Now you can see the elastic is lying flat against the longer piece of the band. And now I'm going to sew the other side of the shorter piece of the band to the long piece. And I'm going to bring the elastic over the front of the band across that long piece. And just make sure that they're going to be sewn in the same spot, roughly. I'm going to tack it on. And it, it's going to go sort of backwards over that smaller piece. And you'll see in a minute when I pull it all out. And now I'm going to sew that raw edge together of my band. So my four inch deep band now becomes a two inch deep band or my 10 centimeter deep band becomes a five centimeter deep band. And I'm sewing very close to the edge of the seam. So maybe um, a quarter of an inch or 50 millimeters, 60 millimeters. I'm gonna sew a little tab just off center, but you can put it wherever you want, but with a braid, you can turn it anywhere you want on your head, but I'm gonna put a little tab on for my bow center at this point. And now it's time to sew the band onto the top of the braid. So right sides together, I'm gonna to match notches. Now I've notched the center of the back of the elastic band and I notch the center of the main part of the band as well. So I have a front and back of my band and I'm using the end of a seam. Two ends of the seams that are parallel with each other or opposite, sorry, of each other. And I'm pinning and just sort of stretching out a little bit as I go because that elastic is going to gather some of the length of the band. So you will pull it out while you're sewing the two pieces together. And I'm using my 3 8 of an inch wide seam. And when I'm finished, if I wanted to finish it off nicely, I could use my serger to finish that edge. But you don't have to. And there we go. Now I'm just going to make a bow. And you can cut the bow any size you want. I've sort of folded mine in half and made a, a middle point. And I'm going to use the technique that I always use for a bow. I take the ends of my thread and make them long when I start my seam. And then I cut the ends at the end of the seam long. And I use those ends to wrap in opposite directions after I've gathered the center of the bow and that's how I tie my bows. And when I'm happy with the amount of wrapping I've done and the amount of gathering, cause I could loosen it up at this point a bit if I wanted it to be a little bit um, not cinched as much. I tie it in a knot, trim it, and there I have my bow gathered and I'm just gonna feed it into the casing on the beret and look at that. I'm done. I have a great little hat to wear to the grocery store, out doing errands, just to make me feel a little bit warmer on these cool, chilly fall days. Now, you could also put a pin there if you prefer, but for the sake of this lesson, a bow was pretty and the bow is easy. So there's your pattern pieces again. If you've purchased the boho cap, pattern from us you're going to get this as a free update so look for that in your email as soon as we finish digitizing the pattern we will have the pattern digitized soon in three sizes if you prefer that and it will be a very nominal fee to purchase this pattern in three sizes well i hope you enjoyed this video today thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you again next week
with another fabulous hat video. Thanks for watching. Bye.